Hello students, Ms. Swanson here, and today we're going to learn about electromagnetic radiation. And I chose this picture here because it shows several different regions of the electromagnetic spectrum and some of the things that we can get using those types of, or that area of the electromagnetic spectrum, like TVs, cell phones, and then also uh, if we end up using it for x-rays um, or to combat cancer. So we have a few learning goals here today. You should be able to describe the visible and invisible regions of the electromagnetic spectrum. You should be able to describe the properties of waves, so that includes amplitude, frequency, and wavelength. And you should be able to describe the regions of the electromagnetic spectrum in terms of uh, frequency, wavelength, and amplitude, er, and energy. Sorry. So first of all, electromagnetic radiation is a form of energy. It's a wave that has electric parts and magnetic parts, which is why it's called electromagnetic radiation. Uh, it does not require a medium to travel, so it doesn't need to be in air, it doesn't need to be in water, it can just travel, and it travels at the speed of light. So here's a picture of different regions of the electromagnetic spectrum. We have things like uh, radio and microwaves, which are, you know, radio waves are used for radio, TV, microwaves we use for our food, um, infrared radiation, which is um, radiation from heat often, uh, visible light is light that we can see, uh, we have ultraviolet light, so this is um, used in fluorescence tubes, it's also um, uh, um, absorbed by the skin, so ultraviolet light or UV light is dangerous to our skin, it can cause cancer. Um, there are x-rays which we use to look inside of bodies, um, they're also produced in space, um, and then there's gamma radiation which we use in medicine to help kill cancer cells. So let's take a closer look at the visible light. This is electromagnetic radiation that a human eye can detect. So there are two different types of cells in our eye that help us detect, uh, or, uh, that help us detect visible light. There are rod cells and cone cells. The rod cells help us see details, they help us see in the dark, but they can't see any color. The cone cells help us see color, and there are three different types. There's red, green, and blue, and each type can only perceive its particular color. Now if we wanted to see something that was another color, for example something that's yellow, then both the red and the green would both perceive that light, and the combination of those two put together, our brain interprets as yellow. So this is how we would see different colors, and then we see the details, we see things in black and white using our rod cells. So let's take a look at waves, and these aren't just the visible light, but this is visible and invisible light. So, or visible and invisible to the human eye, uh, electromagnetic radiation. So first of all, there's a wave that forms a pattern like this, up and down, up and down, um, and a line that we can sort of draw in between, we call this a reference line. This would be halfway between the top of the top points and the bottom of the bottom points. This reference line isn't actually part of the wave, but it helps us describe the parts of the wave. So the very, very tip top of the wave is called, um, uh, is called a crest, just like you would call a wave in the water, the crest, and the very, very bottom is called the trough. So you have the crest and the trough are the two top and bottom pieces. Now if we go from the reference line, which is halfway between those two, so we go from the reference line to the crest, that's called the amplitude of the wave. Similarly, we could go from the reference line to the trough, and that would be the same distance since the reference line is halfway between, and that's the amplitude of the wave. The next one is the wavelength, and that would be from crest to crest or from trough to trough. They should be the same, so that would be our wavelength. Um, and I think that's all we have on this picture. Oh, frequency is how frequent a, or how many waves pass by in a certain period of time. And usually for frequency we talk about hertz, which is per second. So how many waves would pass by per second? And we would count a wave from one reference line to the next reference line. So you'd have the start, you'd have a trough, or sorry, a crest, you'd have a trough, and then back to the reference line. That would be considered one wavelength. And so you would go, how many of those per second pass by? We would call that the frequency. 
So if we take a look at our electromagnetic spectrum and all the different regions, the area where we have microwaves and radio waves, those have a very long wavelength and it gets shorter as you go across the electromagnetic uh, um, the electromagnetic spectrum. The wavelength gets shorter as you get towards gamma rays. Those are the shortest wavelength. Um, there's the lowest energy on the radio waves and microwaves end and the highest energy on the gamma rays end and the lowest frequency on the radio waves and the microwaves region and the highest frequency on the gamma ray region. So there's long wavelength, low energy, low frequency on the radio waves end and short wavelength, high energy and high frequency on the other end of the spectrum. So let's take another look at our learning goals. Can you describe the visible and invisible regions of the electromagnetic spectrum? Can you describe the properties of waves? And can you describe the regions of electromagnetic spectrum in terms of those properties? If you can, fantastic. If not, please re-watch the video. And if you're still having questions, come ask me in class tomorrow. All right, that's all for now. Bye-bye.